Welcome back to this channel. Watch to the end for channel shout out. Hello chief. Hello Samuel. How are you? Fine chief. Everything is set. She will meet you at the pavilion at exactly 9.30 pm tonight. Good. What about the dress code? White of course. Just as agreed. Hmm. Good boy. In a short while you will receive my message. Good boy. Samuel. Thank you chief. Welcome. Hello Wendy. Are you ready? Samuel my guy, very ready, trust me my guy, you know I can never disappoint. He will pick you up at the pavilion by 9.30pm in a Toyota Sienna, blue color. Don't be late and don't forget to keep this deal between us, take it as a favor from me to you. Fred. Victoria. Are you alright? I am not alright at all. Where are you heading to at this time of the night? You cannot believe that since the beginning of this day, I've not witnessed to a soul and I cannot sleep, at least one soul a day. So? I am looking for who to witness the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to. At this time of the night? I should get a person at least. Fred, don't you think you are taking this too far? Aren't we all Christians? I know, that is our mandate as Christians, it is our mandate for each and every one of us to witness the gospel of our Jesus Christ. So who do you think you are going to meet at this time of the night? I will get someone, I will preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to everyone. Fred. Is this not the mad preacher coming? Let me flee before he gets to me, I am not going to learn to any foolish sermon. Fred again. Wendy, good evening. Good evening Fred. How are you? I am fine thank you. Can I just take a minute of your time? Not today, as you can see, I am actually busy, I have an outing to go to tonight. I know you have an outing but Jesus Christ has an important message from you. Him. Message. He always has an important message, in fact he always sends it through you, isn't that weird? Jesus has an important message, he is the way, the truth and the life. Seriously, this night, I can't wait for your sermon, I am tried of all of them. This sacrifice has failed. What? Oh my goodness. I don't understand. How can that be? Of course you should. You should understand because I gave you the ring. And I told you that any girl you want to bring to me must be touched with that ring. Yes sir. Obviously that girl has not been touched with that ring. That is why the ritual failed. Ritual failed. Wait chief. Are you sure you picked her at the roundabout as agreed? the pavilion at 9.30 p.m., was that not our agreement? Yes, I was there 20 minutes past 9 waiting, and then she showed up in a white dress as agreed, she was there on time. So when she approached my car, she stopped, obviously trying to be sure I was the one she was going to meet. Hello fine girl, how are you? I am the one you are looking for, I have your money with me, $10,000 for a night. Later she jumped into my car and we drove away, so tell me, what am I supposed to do that I did not do? Tell me, Chief, I don't think I understand all these, but Chief I am sorry, it's still a mystery. It's okay, it's okay Samuel. Yes sir, my ring, here sir, now get out of my car. No, but Chief, excuse me, I can no longer cope with your excuses, I have to start the ritual again because of your gross incompetence. Get out and never call my number again. Chief, Chief, I promise to make it up to you. Leave my car now or I will blow your head off. Okay. Samuel, I am sorry. Cut the crap. Wendy I am highly disappointed in you. I'm sorry. You failed me, you just made me lose a good source of income. Wait if you are not the one Chief picked then who? I'm sorry. Who? That part is still a puzzle to me as well, if not for that religious bigot called Fred, I would have made it, as I was going that night, he met me on the way. He tried to preach to me as usual, I was so annoyed, as I was going that night, he tried to grab me. I yanked his hands off me so I lost my balance and fell inside gutter, I was so messed up that I had to go back to the hostel around 9.25pm for a change of clothing. It was 5 minutes past 10, I am sorry Samuel, I met no car and no chief waiting for me, I am so sorry, I am very very sorry, you know that I am not like that. I'm sorry. Hello, 
Gather the boys, we have an urgent task to attend to tonight. Girls, I am really tired of this semester, it is really boring, I can't wait for this semester to end, then I will be totally free. I am looking forward to that freedom too, but each time I say this at home, my mom would laugh at me and be telling me that I'd soon realize that adulthood comes with responsibilities. At least you have someone pushing you to do things you don't want to do. Pressure from lecturers, from parents and other adults who believes that you are too naive to live your own life. Victoria, it seems you are really enjoying this. Because you don't look stressed and you are equally brilliant. Sure, you are brilliant, you are the best student in our department and you passed your exams with little or no stress, God even blessed you with a brilliant boyfriend. Please girl, I have told you time without number that Fred is not my boyfriend. Really? Yes. You people are completely oblivious of what is going on in this campus. What is it? What is going on? It is Fred, your boyfriend. He is not my boyfriend. Okay, I learned that he was attacked by some cultist last night. Oh my goodness, is he alive? They said his incessant preaching on campus is disturbing their operation. Where is he? Calm down, the last time I heard, he was on admission at Flourish Hospital, and he is still alive till this morning. Whether or not he will still be alive tonight remain uncertain. I need to leave now. What is wrong with you? Can't you keep something? Must you say everything? Everywhere you go to you must open that your mouth to say nonsense. Am I now guilty of bringing the news? Anyways, if that boy survive it, that will teach him to keep his tongue that he always wags about in the name of preaching and his fanatic attitude. I am the one that knows what I have lost as a result of his preaching and his fanatical attitude. Hey girls, you people are seated here when a lot is going on out there. What is it again? We have heard that Fred was attacked by cultist. Scale news, the lastest news is about Tina of sociology department, that runs girl, she was found dead this morning close to the school area. What? Moreover, you won't believe some parts of her body were missing. That must be ritual killing. Yes, those who last saw her said they saw her at the pavilion around 9.30pm, and she went away with one rich man in one Toyota Sienna without registration number. Wait, at the pavilion? Yes. 9.30pm? Yes. Toyota Sienna? Yes, the shocking aspect is that, as if she knows that she was going to die that day, she was dressed in white. White? Yes, may God deliver us from all these sugar daddies. Fred, please wake up. Lord please save Fred, revive him, please do not let him die, don't let him die Lord, please consider his zeal for you, Fred, see where your foolishness has landed you. Did Jesus not warn us to be as wise as serpent and gentle as dove? God, Fred is being prosecuted for your sake, he is suffering for righteousness. Wait a minute, what am I thinking? Must a believer confront death, when death is not looking for him? Fred you have stepped on the tail of a sleeping dog. You tested God and it was sheer foolishness, oh my goodness, I should be praying for his survival. Lord Jesus, please do not let him die. Jesus, I don't know why you did this for me but I know that I don't deserve it, there is nothing that my parents have not done to make me come to you. Yet I have always regarded godly life as boring life, I wanted a life of adventures and excitements, and registered Toyota Sienna, 9.30pm at the pavilion, white dress, so it would have been me. I would have been killed for ritual, that was what Samuel planned for me. And I thought being friendly with a cultist will free me from their trouble, I should have known that the devil does not have friends. Lord Jesus, I am ready for you now, I really don't know how to find you, but I know that you are everywhere, even here right now, please Jesus save me, please save me. Mummy and Daddy, his condition is stabilizing, by the special grace of God he is coming back to normal, so I will see you later in the evening. Thank you doctor. Go you see your son. Look Fred, we are all Christians, we brought you up in the way of the Lord, in fact we led you to Christ. It is not as we don't want you to serve God, no, that is not it, your service to God gives us great joy and we will not have it any other way. But what we are saying is that you should apply wisdom, apply wisdom to these things. Listen, we sent you to school to study so that you can give yourself firm foundation for a better tomorrow and not to go and start a ministry in the school, no. 
Fred, we are not against your decision to preach the gospel of Jesus, we do so too, but what we are saying is that you have to be careful who you preach to and where you preach. If you had died, what would have happened to us? You would have left us mourning. Dad, Mum, the magnitude of unrighteousness, the magnitude of sin in that campus is too much. I cannot just sit down and watch people go about with their sinful life and characters, that is why I remember this scripture in 1 Corinthians 9 verse 16. For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me, for woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Listen to him, listen to your son. I just heard what he said. What if he had died? Tell me what if he had died in the process? Isn't it better for you to be alive, so you can bring more fruit to the Lord? Tell me my son, what exactly is the fruit of this reckless risk of your life? Where is the fruit? Fred, I can't thank you enough, but I know that the God that you serve will reward you greatly, that night when you attempted to preach to me. You disrupted the plans of the devil to destroy my life, Fred, your present pain is the price for showing me the way. Who is that? That night when you attempted to preach to me, you disrupted the plans of the devil to destroy my life, Fred, I was already being sold for ritual. I was a baggage going for delivery, I missed my appointment with the supposed Aristo, the ritualists, your efforts were my saving grace. Another student was picked up and killed in my stead, I felt guilty when I heard what has befallen you, I couldn't muster the courage to come to you. Until I realized that you have survived, Fred, all I want you to know is that you shouldn't be discouraged and that your efforts in my life will not be in vain. And I want to encourage you to please continue to make heaven happy. I thank you so much. You have really done so much for me. Few weeks later. How are you doing today? I'm fine thank you sir. You are getting discharged today. Thank you so much doctor. Everybody, Fred is here. Please welcome him. Thank you so much everyone. For Christ's sake what is wrong with you Fred? Do you really think it is possible for you to single-handedly win every student here on campus? Haven't you learned a lesson from what happened to you recently? Brother Fred, take it easy, at least this semester is coming to a close, let this semester end, then you will continue preaching next semester. That was the same thing I told him, but he won't just listen, Fred is too stubborn. Sisters, every believer who understands his divine purpose will not take evangelism with levity, according to Mark 16 verse 15. This is our main assignment that each and every one of us is left with. An assignment for every believers and not exclusively for Fred. But for Fred, it is a task founded upon a convenient with God, I was not the only child of my parents, there were two of us. I had an elder brother, Timothy who was wayward and was unruly as any agent of the devil can be, he was a cultist dreaded by many. My parents and I prayed and pleaded for a change of heart in him, he won't listen, one day, my brother came face to face with death in a cold clash. His charm failed him and he could not escape, he was bleeding and vomiting blood, he pleaded that I should show him Jesus but I could not. I was too horrified at the sight, he saw my hesitation and he left saying that he was going to go and seek Jesus at the church. We found his butchered body by the roadside the following morning, whether he found Jesus or not, we can't tell, but that was the last time we saw him alive. And the overwhelming guilt of my inaction that day has never left me ever since, Ezekiel 36 verse 6 says that if a watchman sees the sword coming, and blow not the trumpet that the people might be warned, if the sword comes and takes any of the people, the blood shall be required from the watchman. This is the word of God, now you know why I vowed that no sinner will slip past me, I suggest that you too should take evangelism as passionate as that, it is worth dying for. Thank you Jesus for everything you have done in my life and the life of my family, I give you all the glory, honor and praise in the name of Jesus. Oh my goodness, he is praying again. Sister Victoria, good afternoon. Just give me my book and let me go. Sister Victoria, you didn't tell me you were going this early. I only have today and tomorrow to spend at home and thanks to you half of my precious Saturday has been wasted. And certainly, half of my tomorrow will be spent in church. Sincerely, I am very sorry, it was my fault, I am very sorry. But how could you spend so much time praying? What were you praying about? I said I am sorry. Excuse me. Today's service was exceptionally long, but it was refreshing, then dad and mum had to wait for another timeless meeting. Church girl, what a way to spend your Sunday, I thought Sunday was supposed to be a day of rest as instructed by God, that is why it is good to party on Saturdays. So that you can enjoy your Sundays, I don't mind going to church once in a while, but it is not the type you attend, where Sunday service takes all day. 
Girl, I have told you times without number that heaven is real, give your life to Jesus. But wait, because you just came back from church where you have been reminded about heaven, you have started preaching to me. I just hope that you are not going the way of that your fanatic boyfriend. Deborah, I have told you times without number that I don't have a boyfriend and I don't believe in having anyone. I am a child of God, notwithstanding what anyone thinks of me. Girl, please sheath your sword, you know it is a sin to quarrel on a holy day, remember. Anyways girlfriend, we really miss you. We can't wait for you to return, so that we can give you the lastest update and the full gist of the all-night party we attended yesterday. The party was brimming with guys, it was great, it was awesome. So you consider partying with guys awesome. May God have mercy on you. Amen and you too, with this your boring Christian life. Please babe, let's end this conversation now, I need to catch up with some hours of sleep, so that Virgin Mary will enjoy her Sunday. Okay, I should be in school early tomorrow morning, then you can feed me with all your story. Bye girls. Victoria. Mom. What kind of friends spends their Sundays sleeping after spending Saturday night in the party? What kind of company do you keep at school? You are a Christian for God's sake. And I still remain one, mum do not judge me by other people's character, I do not attend parties with them, I do not deny Jesus. Mom, don't regard me as a backslider. Aren't you one, Victoria aren't you one, what happened to 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14, that say, don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Even though you do not attend parties like them, you do not keep boyfriends like them, but you seem to envy their lifestyle. They are comfortable sharing their escapades with you, have you forgotten Romans 1 verse 32? Excuse me, not only those that sin will be condemned, but also those that derive pleasure in those that do it. So are you condemning me to hell now? How dare you? Victoria what is wrong with you, what has come over my daughter? You have never in your life raised your voice at me until today, it shouldn't have been you. Everyone, let's come to Jesus, follow Jesus. Thank you Jesus, to spread the fire, thank you Jesus. I will do just that. I will make sure I fulfill your will, I will do just that, thank you Jesus. Dad, I am leaving now to campus. Wait for a moment, I need to talk to you. Victoria. Sir. You have changed a lot during the last one year, the changes I have seen in you are not pleasant at all, you hardly even pray on your own these days. And if you manage to do so, your prayers are very brief, you now sleep during family altar and you give a lot of excuses for not attending church services. I wonder if you even have time for the word of God again, Victoria. Dad, I don't know what is wrong with me, I do not engage in anything wrong, I attend school fellowships regularly, but... But what my daughter? At least you know that your mum and I are always there for you, talk to me. Dad it's hard, studying, prayer, fasting and fellowshipping with the brethren, it makes me look odd among my friends. It doesn't make me feel among them, I know deep down that God is not happy with my attitude, but at least, I abstain from youthful lust. You abstain from all except one, my dear, do you remember Romans 1 verse 32 that your mum referred to yesterday? Yes sir. There the Bible tells us that if we share in the pleasure of evil with those who commit sins, we are as guilty as they are before God, and are therefore worthy of some punishment that they deserve. Victoria. Sir. You need to be very careful. Anyway, I want you to know that you are a representative of Christ in that campus. You are supposed to influence others in favor of Christ. They are not supposed to influence you with evil. Proverbs 1 verse 10 says, My son if sinner entice thee, consent thou not, I want to warn you strictly, do not make an attempt to belong with the people of the world because you don't belong to them, is that clear? Yes, sir. It is well with you, my daughter. Amen. Let us pray. Believe me, that boy cannot care for a lady, even his facial expression shows that he is not a romantic type. You see, didn't I tell you so? If you like sell yourself so cheaply to that fraudulent guy, my dear, that is your problem. Common girls, how can you judge a book by its cover? The guy is not really like that, you know. The problem is that you can't resist handsome guys that comes your way. Thanks for your compliment, at least I have taste and I find them more attractive, what about that your ugly Anderson or what does he call himself? That one, he is a past tense right now. Past tense. He is, I have sucked him dry and I have dumped him, what did you expect? My friend is a money sucking vampire. The nemesis of men in our time, princess, I hail thee. Deborah, you need to drop that guy. 
But what if he really loves her? Tell them. Sometimes, behind a hard face is a soft personality. Thank you. Sister Victoria, so you are also a philosopher of love. Yes, I tell you guys that under born again facade is a lot of hidden skills. And these brothers and sisters knows how they manage themselves, you understand what I meant right? Exactly, just take a look at Sister Victoria and Brother Fred. Please stop this, stop insinuating there is something between Fred and I. Anyone who is born again will not engage in immorality like you girls do. But they can advise us of the choice of boyfriends like you did right. Girls let's be mindful of the jokes we share and we all know that Fred is a pastor to the call. And that is why I can never trust him, pastors are the worst demons walking amongst us. Hmm. Kate, I can't believe that, I am surprised that this is coming from you, how could you say that? I am leaving. Sister Victoria. Fred, I have told you times without number that you should stop adding sister anytime you want to call me, stop adding that title to my name. My name is simply Victoria. Is that all? I am sorry, Sister Victoria, oh sorry Victoria, how are you? I am fine thank you. Your face looks so serious, I just want to tell you something. I'm all ears. I noticed that there is a change in your behavior, there is a change in your lifestyle, Sister Victoria. What is wrong with this my lifestyle, what is wrong with the way I live my life? Just tell me. I noticed that you move closer to the people of the world, I noticed that the way you dress these days, the way you communicate, you talk like them. In fact, I can't find any trace of being a believer in your life again, Sister Victoria, what are you doing about this? Doing about what? Look, I know this is not my first time of telling you this, but I believe there is a room for change, that is why I won't stop, that is why I must not stop until you are back. There is always a room for change, Sister Victoria, now tell me, look at the kind of friends you move around with. Have you ever tell them about the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ? Even for once, just once. Tell me. Fred, you too tell me, how do you know that I have not been preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to my friends? Are you now a prophet Fred? I am sorry, I am not saying that I am a prophet. But can you just look into my eyes in the presence of God and tell me sincerely that you have been telling them about our Lord Jesus Christ? Okay, remember the scripture says in the book of Mark 8 verse 38, it says that, Whosoever shall be ashamed of me in this sinful and adulterous world. Of him shall I be ashamed of in the presence of my father, I don't know, whether you feel within your heart that they might shun you, or you are shy. But this is our main mandate, this is what we ought to do as a believer, that's it, remember Dinah in the book of Genesis 34. She regretted and later suffered a great consequence for that, I just want you to change, think about it. Okay, thank you brother Fred, I will do something about it. Wait, don't forget that the Bible also says that whosoever is ashamed of me. In this sinful and adulterous generation of him shall I be ashamed of before my father, when he cometh in glory with his holy angels. Sister Victoria, I want you to think about this very well. I will think about it, thank you, can I go now? Hmm. One more thing, I have gathered people on campus, I have gathered brethren to intercede for revival in this campus. I have gathered some set of people so that we can cry to God together, so we can press in the place of prayers that there will be a great awakening in this campus. And do you know what? I want you to come, I want you to join us, it is just an hour meeting from 5 to 6 in the evening. No Fred, I should be in school reading, I've got so many things to do. You will be in school reading, I understand you are a student, I am also a student, as I am now, I am moving to the library now. I just want to find time to study and later in the evening I will be in the meeting, why don't we stay back together and later in the evening we can go. As you can see now, I am tired and I have things to do, I will read later, please excuse me. Sister Victoria. Excuse me. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Let us lift up our voices unto God and say, Father, let there be light on this campus, let us lift up our voices and pray. Father, shine your light upon us in this campus. So don't worry about it, okay? The arrangements are set, all your scores will be doctored and every member of Diamond World will come out in flying colors. Doctor, sir, how do we manage that? There are some lectures that will not want to cooperate easily, but it is easy, we can convince them our own way. Anyone that refuses to cooperate, we will. No, it hasn't come to that yet. Remember I said the arrangements is set. Everyone has a price, you know. Okay, doctor. Look at that girl. 
Which one? The one that is going there, the one with orange color and black cloth. I have had my eyes on her for a while now. Oh, that original bookworm? She doesn't have time for anybody or any guy, except for that fanatic guy called Fred. Fred, so what is special about Fred to her? Nothing really special, just that she is the best student in the faculty while Fred is the second best student. Doctor, you can approach her, we all know that she is not so committed to this religion stuff, she just claims to be born again while all her friends are runs girls. But doctor, one thing is very important, if we can cut Fred off, then you can get her. Cut off Fred, that is a sacrifice that I am willing to make, leave it to me, let everything be the way we have discussed, okay? Alright sir. I will see you later. Thank you sir. Please sir, I can't do this. I came to school to study and I am not ready for any relationship. You are in luck, my dear, you are already in luck. See, I don't have time to, I am too busy to be in a relationship. So let's just make this a one-time affair and get done with it. Please sir, I am a child of God, I can't give my body to you. And who is a child of the devil? Tell me. Please sir. Aren't we all created in the likeness of God? Please sir. Please spare me all this trash, talk to me like a normal human being. Please sir, I beg you in the name of God. Just one night, just one night at Topmost Hotel, that's all. Please sir, please. Now listen to me, I have a lot of things to do, I will give you some time to go and think about it, and you better be quick about it. Once examination starts, it means that is all. Please sir. Your second semester results will speak loud about it. Please I beg you sir. Young girl, leave my office, the only thing I want to hear from you is yes. Good day. <laughs> Victoria, you are still crying, Victoria, once a situation like this arise, there is nothing we can do to help it, you see this our lecturer, they are like gods here on campus. <laughs> and unless God intervene, there is nothing we can do when they fix their eyes upon you, the irony is that, this our God hardly intervene. He seems to enjoy looking at us sinking into our mysteries, Victoria, what has to be done, has to be done. I know you cannot afford to lose the opportunity to emerge the best graduating student, after all you will get married one day and you will lose your so-called virginity. <laughs> Victoria, just a night, just one night and after the night, you pretend as if nothing happened, and everything will end in a win-win situation. Victoria, just a night, just one night, please stop crying. Matthew 10 verses 28 says that we can not be afraid of them that can destroy the body and not the soul, but we should fear the one that can destroy the body and the soul. We can't afford to sacrifice eternal life for academics excellence, it is not worth it, what if you compromise your faith and give in to this man's evil demands? And then God says time up, what gain will the result then bring to you that actually amount to gaining the whole world and losing your soul? I know how hard it may be for you, but Job 22 verse 28 says thou shalt decree a thing on earth and it shall be established. I believe when we cry to the Lord in prayer, he will hear us, he will definitely hear us. So she has not given yet. Not yet, you see, I carried out a check on her background, and I discovered she is a book freak, just like you said. I am sure she will give in, she won't want to lose all the academic achievements she has been accumulating since the beginning of her studies. She'll come around. I only threatened to tamper with her result, although I will not be able to do that. Why? You should see the grades she has been having, her academic achievements since her first semester in this school. You can't fail a student like her just like that, even if you try to fail her and she does not raise an eyebrow then. The school authority can probe into the examination record and ask why such a student failed, do you understand what I am saying? Yes I understand. Then I won't be able to defend myself. I never thought of that, let's hope she gives in soon, or better still we can deal with Fred then we will be able to break her resolve easily. That is a brilliant idea, if Fred is off the radar then I will have a chance, something just came up to my mind now. What if Fred answers script got missing and then the script now finds its way to his locker? How about that? That is wonderful, doctor, that is a good one. One more thing Samuel, Diamond World needs to fight very fast, Green Vipers are trying to blackmail the VC into appointing some of their pillars into head of department. Once that is done, we won't be able to manipulate any results again, I hope you know what I am talking about. Doctor, that will never happen. Very good. Trust me doctor, that will never happen, this is our terrain, 
we have been ruling here for decades. Once the snake head is cut off, it becomes an ordinary piece of rope. Let us cut off the head now. Doctor, we will spring to action. I trust you. Hello, mummy. Hello, Victoria, how are you? Knew me there is a particular lecturer that has been disturbing me in my department. He said he wants sex from me. What? Are you sure of what you are talking about? He said if I don't give him my body that I wouldn't pass his course. Mummy, please pray for me. Wait, Victoria. Hello, hello. Let us pray for our daughter, that anyone who is trying to destroy her life and her destiny shall not prosper in the name of Jesus. Anyone trying to destroy my daughter's destiny, you will not prosper in the name of Jesus, you will not find rest until you leave my daughter in the name of Jesus. Anyone troubling the destinies of any student here on campus, I command you in the name of Jesus to back off now, your plans upon every student here will not come to pass in the name of Jesus. Move now. Please let us go. Now move your feet, get going. Please let me go. Now move. Please, what did I do to you? Please let me go. Kate, Deborah and Princess, what are you doing here? Victoria, why did you refuse to tell us? We are here because you hid the truth from us. Kate, which truth is that? The truth you hid from them because you wanted to belong, the truth you despised for academics excellence. Now you are just as powerless as they are, a victim like them. Lord have mercy, have mercy. Mercy. He always has, but you spurn because his yoke is too heavy for you and our yoke is light for you to bear. Lord, have mercy on me. So Victoria, you saw us being beaten by a man, and you couldn't save us. And I accused you of not telling us the truth which could have saved us. Is there something, Victoria, that you are keeping from us? What is that thing that you are hiding from us? Yes, but it is an open secret. It is a true that you all are aware of but you don't just understand its worth, and I had to keep quiet about it. Because I was avoiding the shame of being labeled a fanatic. So what truth will that be? The fact that we all stand the risk of hellfire by the way we live our lives. The fact that we reject the saving grace that has been offered to us. In order to enjoy the pleasure of this world, how shall we escape if we neglect the great salvation? But Victoria, you and I know that we attend church services regularly, you in particular don't go to parties or keep boyfriends like the rest of us. So are you telling me that your good deeds cannot outweigh our evil? No Kate, it is not enough, he that committed a sin is of the devil for the devil sinneth from the beginning. The wicked shall be turned to hell, and all the nation that forget God. Then no one will make it to heaven, I am sure of that, because even the custodian of the so-called gospel are the worst demons among us. I don't understand what you are saying, Kate. I know you have always wondered why I criticize pastors a lot, especially since I told you that my pastor sponsored my education. The truth about it is that there is a contract between us. A contract? Yes, he will continue to pay my tuition as long as he sleeps with me. What? When my mother died, I became an orphan, no one was ready to bear my burden, my pastor appeared as a friend in need at the beginning. But later he made his intentions clear to me that he always wanted to lay with me, I was helpless, there was no power in me. And as usual, God was absent when I needed him the most, he allowed his so-called servant to use me. How can that same God condemn me to hell? Kate, you should have faith in God, he is a very present help in times of need. As for the pastor, God's verdict of woe to Jeremiah will be his portion if he refuses to repent. What should I have done? I always battled with the burden of condemnation, I know I wasn't at peace with my maker, but I was angry with him. I detested him, how can I find my way back to him? The first step is repentance from sin and determination to never go back to it again, then you should ask for forgiveness. Because he that coveth his sin shall not prosper, and then surrender your life to him and you will become a true child of God, let me pray with you. I am happy that you are here, this is an answer to prayer. Thank you. Thank God you are here, thank God that you heeded to the warning of the Lord, welcome. Thank you Lord, I am fully restored to Christ now, I am standing in Christ without fear and without shame. And about the case of Dr. Peterson, I left everything at the feet of God, I know nothing is impossible for God. 
You are right, Sister Victoria. Oh, I am sorry, Victoria. I am no longer shame of being called Sister Victoria again. Glory to God, let us join the intercessory prayer meeting. Jesus loves you, give your life to Christ and you will prosper. Thank you for the word of God. Brother Fred, I just checked out our results and yours was not good at all, what is happening? I don't just understand, I don't understand at all, I don't. How come? You know what, I will see you later. Isn't this Brother Fred answers script, what is it doing in the restroom? Let me take it to him. Please sir, sir please have mercy on me, I submitted my script when others were submitting, I promise. I just don't understand how the script got missing, I promise, please sir. The only help I can render to you is what I have done already, asking you to leave my office and never show your face here ever again. What do you think the Senate will say when they hear that you are just submitting your answer script after the examination? Sir please, I didn't cheat in the exam hall, I promise, throughout I was just minding my business. I see, who said anything about cheating? Tell me who said anything about cheating. That means you are actually up to something. Anyway there is nothing more I can do for you than not reporting you to the Senate, but if you remain in my office till the next 60 seconds, you will have to plead before the Senate. Please sir, I beg you, have mercy on me, please sir. 40 seconds. Please sir. 20 seconds. Please sir. 10 seconds. I am leaving, please sir. Let us begin to pray for our family, friends and everyone on campus. Why isn't Fred in the prayer meeting today? I can believe I failed my exam, I can't stay in this hostel again, I am leaving. Brother Fred, Brother Fred, I think he is not at home, let us go. My dedication, my sacrifice, my hard work has gone down the drain like that, Psalms 34 verse 5 says they look up unto him and were lightened and they have no shame. But I looked unto you Lord, what else do I have now apart from shame? I failed a major course I worked very hard to pass, and you watched this happen to me. I know you to be a just God, why would you allow an agent of darkness like Dr. Peterson to laugh at me? What have I done that you cannot forgive me? And Dr. Peterson, my heart curse you, as you have injured me emotionally. May he never be free from frustration and failure, may your struggle for greatness always be great futility. Fred. Dad. What is wrong with you Fred? Nothing is wrong with me Dad, I am fine. That is what you have been saying anytime I ask you about it. Fred, I am your father and I know you very well, I know that something is definitely going on with you. I noticed some very unpleasant changes in you, ever since you returned from school you have been acting moody and withdrawn. You seem to have lost zeal for the things of God and for God himself, even church services does not excite you anymore, and you keep telling me that all is well. Common son, tell me what the problem is. There is nothing wrong dad, there is nothing wrong, I am fine. But your attitude is saying otherwise. Dad I need to be alone, I need to be alone for a while, please dad. It's alright, okay fine. Hello Sister Victoria. Hello Brother Fred, thank God I can hear your voice again, how are you? Why haven't you been picking up or returning my calls? Nothing. You still sound sad, please don't let Satan take advantage of this situation to attack, remember Romans 8 verse 38. Which says all things work together for our good, to those who love God and were called according to his purpose. Brother Fred, I am sure the Lord has a purpose for allowing this to happen, Brother Fred encourage yourself in the Lord. Remember your counsel to me when I was threatened by Dr. Peterson, okay, will you be attending the intercessory prayer meeting this week? No. Brother Fred, the same meeting you initiated yourself. Brother Fred I need you to encourage yourself. The brethren are becoming tired of it. They even suggest that we just scrape this thing because they have not been seeing you, we have not been seeing you in this meeting. Since the beginning of this holiday, Brother Fred, you were the one that started this move, would you just allow this vision to die like that? Brother Fred, we shall be praying for you, do not lose your courage in God, remember that many of us are looking up to you for encouragement. And do not forget the commitment that the Lord has placed in your hands. Lord please do something, this situation is getting out of hands, the mighty has fallen and it is making me afraid for the rest of us that are still trying to go. If someone like Brother Fred can succumb easily to a challenge, who among us, who among the rest of us can stand? And the work, the revival you have started through him, how will it continue like this? Will the fire die again? What is the fate of the intercessory team without Brother Fred? Please Father restore your son, please heal his wounds and comfort him. 
Do not let the devil rejoice in victory over brother Fred, and the flame of fire through the intercessory unit, please keep it burning. Dear Lord, please deliver your son Fred, strengthen him the more, please Lord strengthen him. Lord, encourage him Lord, encourage him. Victoria, thank you for showing us the way, thank God you brought a touch with you or we could have gotten lost. Thank God. Can that just be a dream? I don't think so. Spread the fire, kindle the light in him, is this your mandate for me Lord? Let me send this message to Fred. Hi Fred, this message is to invite you if our intercessory prayer meeting by 5 p.m. Friday. Message from Sister Victoria. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want us to know that we are the light of the world, without our lights, this campus cannot shine forth, this campus needs our lights to spread. This campus needs the fire, it can only happen if we intercede on behalf of this campus. I want us to pray and say Lord Jesus, please give us the strength and the boldness to spread your fire throughout this campus. Father Lord, give us your strength and boldness to spread your fire. O oh Lord help us so that your words will be spread throughout the campus in the name of Jesus. Fred, why is your heart so heavy? Consider my situation, there is nothing to be glad about. Don't be too hard on yourself. The Lord saved you for the salvation of others. He made you a vessel unto honor, fit to be fisher of men. He gave you touch to be a touch bearer to the world. Is a year too much for the Lord? Is a year too much for the Lord to delay you on campus to fulfill his purpose? What? You are losing the touch. Where did he go to? Where is my touch? Lord have mercy, where is my touch? Where is my touch? I am going back to the campus. One week later. Praise the Lord, let us give God a round of applause. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord loves you, he only hates your sin, Psalms 34 verse 18 says. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be a contrite spirit, if you turn to him today. He will wrap away your filthy past with the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross of Calvary. He will save you, 1 John 1 verse 9 says if you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And cleanse us from all unrighteousness, I invite you this morning, as we plead for his mercy together. I want you to surrender all to him, I want us to lay everything down at his feet this morning. God's general, to what do I owe this visit? I heard that you returned yesterday so I decided to come and see you, I have good news for you. Good news? Yes, brother Fred God has fought for you, the authority discovered that there was a massive and widespread fraud in the last examination. Fraud? Yes, we are going to rewrite the exam next week. Really? Yes. Thank you so much for the news. Oh God I am sorry, I know I have failed you, I lost my faith in your abilities to do all things, I lost my integrity. I lost my peace, I lost my honor, I lost my integrity as a church bearer, I acted as if the challenge was bigger than you God, I even cursed my lecturer, Lord have mercy. I am back Lord, I am back, let your mercy prevail, Lord let your mercy prevail, I'm back Lord, I'm back. Glory be to God. Today's channel shout out is to Grace from Nigeria, Paulette, Claudette Campbell, Lee Blake, Cadian, Annette, Rosalyn, Marcy and Tina Kay from Jamaica, Maggie and Lydia Julius from Kenya, Gladys from Ghana, Anika, Riviera, Pamela, Nicoletta, Charlin, Tracy, Gigi, Sandra, Vernita, Georgette, Carol, Kelly, Tracy and Christine from USA. Happiness, Bernard from Italy, Emlyn from India, Victoria from Australia, Agnes from Saudi Arabia, Davina from BVI, Catherine, Florentina, Veronica, Margaret and Priscilla from Trinidad and Tobago, Julia and Gladys from UK, Julie from UAE, Naomi from Bermuda, Queen from Libya, Mathapello, Karats, Ronica, Magubane, Angus, Tariq, Maylene and Mvana from South Africa. Martha, Rose, Peruth and Ruth from Uganda. Sarah from Australia, Tiffany from Barbados, Bogo, Setso and Anne-Marie from Botswana. Drop your name and where you are watching from in the comment section to get a shout out from this channel. Thanks for watching. Like, share and subscribe. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell in order to be notified when another video is being posted.